Hello everyone and welcome back to our latest Forest Quest Virtual Forest School with ideas of things that you can do in your garden at home. And today we're going to have a go at hapazome um, or flower bashing. Hapazome is Japanese for leaf dye and what we're going to do is experiment with different leaves and petals that we have found um, and see whether we can get the dye out of them to make pictures and patterns. And all you need to do that is have a small hammer or mallet and a firm board. Um, I'm using an old breadboard. You could use the floor, you could use a rock, or if you happen to have an old log in your garden, you can use that too, as long as it's a firm surface. And all you have to do to do your leaf bashing, your flower bashing, is first of all, go around collecting a selection of leaves and petals and these are ones that I've just got from my garden. Now with leaves what you're looking for is soft leaves. The ones that are hard or shiny won't work. So you want soft leaves, petals of different colours and then it's a case of just experimenting and trying and seeing which ones work best for you. The flowers and leaves that you pick need to be fresh but they can be petals that have fallen off a flower and are just lying on the floor if you like. Now poppies are one of my favourite flowers at the moment for all the dyeing and colour activities that we've been doing because they work really well. So I'm going to place my poppy onto the paper and just press it down and put another piece of paper on the top and I'm going to hold that very still. Now being careful so that I don't hurt my fingers I'm going to use the hammer to hammer over the shape of the petal. And as you hammer, you will see the moisture coming through the paper. Now it's important that the paper you use is not really, really thin because you'll find that with too much moisture, the paper will just tear. And my paper's actually moved a little bit, which means I've got to hold it even steadier. And then I'm going to peel my paper off and you'll see that the paper that I peel off has a picture or a pattern of the um, petal but also if I peel off from here the petal that I've squished, throw that bit away, you can see the dye that's come out to make a petal print. Now if I wanted to I could use a pen to add to that and make it into a picture to me that's a butterfly wing and if I added antenna here I think I would have a lovely poppy butterfly. I'll try a few other things I've got a buttercup. Dandelions are fabulous but I haven't managed to find one today with the weather not being so bright and sunny and we'll have a little go at a leaf. I've got a leaf I'll press down and I've got a little pink flower. I wonder if you can see all those. Put the paper on top and press it down and then holding it still. And again I'm going to peel it off, take off the petals and there. That leaf's brilliant, look at that. Beautiful. Now these, when you're experimenting or when you think you're finished, can make beautiful pictures. You could make them into cards to send to people. This one is one I experimented with flowers I found on my daily walk. And what I did was write beside them what the plant was. And then I could see which ones worked really well and which ones didn't. So we have a dandelion and a buttercup and a leaf and these were wild flowers that I found on my journey. Another one I did, I tried to make into a picture. So I have plants with flowers on and I used petals from a pansy to make little butterflies flying in the sky. The great thing about this is you can just experiment, try lots of different things. You can try buds, you can try berries, you can try whole flowers or you could do individual petals. Another thing you can do 
is use a piece of material to make your picture. And this time you could put a piece of paper over the top whilst you bash or you could fold the material in half and make a symmetry picture and that's what I'm going to have a go at next. I've got a little piece of material. I'll work out halfway and then I'm going to try and make something that will look like a butterfly. Two poppy petals to be the shape of the butterfly's wing. I'm going to use a leaf for an antenna, a bigger leaf for the body and then I'm going to put some little pink petals on as well. Now I've not tried this before but we'll see if we can get some different shades and press it down and give it a really good bash. Watching your fingers. Oh, it's a nice bit of pink. And when you think you've done it all, that's when you can see if the magic has happened. Take off the used leaves and the petals. And what do you think? Does it look like a butterfly to you? Material wise, this is calico. I just happened to have that in, but if you had an old um, handkerchief or a pillowcase or a sheet that mum says you can have, if she cuts a little bit off for you, you can use that. And you could cut different shapes. This one is a pennant style. If I did a row of those and pegged them up with different plants and different petals, I'd have my own natural bunting. But the main thing is just have fun experimenting and let us know how you get on. See you next week. And welcome to another Forest School in the Garden. This week, I'm gonna have a go at making paint. So I've got a little array of things here that uh, I'm going to use, and I'm going to make it from stones. So I've been around the garden and I've looked for a few stones. There's a nice volcanic stone, a sort of a blacky gray thing, one with a bit of red in, and that's a bit of brick. So I'm gonna have a go at making some paint using these stones. Now, really important, safety, we're going to smash these rocks up. So I am going to wear uh, safety glasses, glasses of some sort, really useful just to protect your eyes. I've also cleaned up a square of the um, patio here so that there's no dust on it. It's reasonably dry um, because we need to collect that just up in a minute. So I'm going to have a go with this nice little red stone here for a start. And I'm going to have to hit it quite hard. So let's see how this goes. There we go. What we're going to try and do is keep all the bits together, try and keep them on our square like this and break each bit up as much as possible. Nice pink colour, look at that. What we don't often know is what colour we're going to get when we start, when we get the stone, what colour it's going to turn into. So we've broken it up into small uh, dust what we're going to do now is we're going to use a dustpan to collect this up as much of it as we can. And if you've got one, pop it into a mortar like this. And then using the pestle, we're gonna grind that even finer. If you haven't got one, just keep hitting it with a hammer until you've got as fine a dust as you can make. What we're going to do now is we're going to sieve it into a little pot and I've got a little tea strainer here. Here's a sieve that you could use or a piece of muslin. Not quite as good because the holes are quite big but you could fold it over or find really fine muslin. But something to filter out all the fine stuff. You remember I did something like this last week when we were making clay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it in a bottle and I'm gonna add a small amount of water and then I'm gonna give it a good shake. So the really fine stuff is suspended in the water like that and leaving all the heavier stuff, which we don't really want to drain to the bottom. So I've got a little tray here and I'm going to pour out really gently so I don't get all that stuff at the bottom. Just the water with the suspended dust in it 
So it's just a coloured water now, and there's some heavier stuff still in the bottom of the bottle. And what we're going to do now is we're going to evaporate off that water. You can do that in a couple of ways. You can either just leave it in the sun, um, best part of 12 hours probably in the sun, so I'll leave it all day and that will probably evaporate in that time. Or you can pop it on the cooker, or if you're outdoors and you've got one of these, you can pop it on a little stove. So I'm going to pop that on there. That's going to take a few minutes just to boil off, not long. It's nearly all boiled off. It doesn't take long. You can see the last of the water just bubbling away there and you can see as it gets uh, more and more water disappears, it starts drying out. You've got to remember, this is now going to be really hot. So we've got to be, it's worth just leaving that for about two minutes just to let it cool down. Okay, so it's cooled down reasonably well. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all that dust into a pallet. You can see I've done some before, a couple of different colours. So I'm just going to put all that dust into one of these pallet holes. If you haven't got a pallet, you can put it in on anything, a little saucer, anything you like. This is called paint pigment, and that's going to be the colour of our paint. Okay, so now we're going to need to turn that into paint. There are several things you can use as a base to make it into a liquid. I've got a few things here which you can use. Uh, you can just use water, but what happens to water is that it uh, doesn't stick. So the paint doesn't remain as a paint, it doesn't stick to whatever you're going to paint. It just brushes off eventually. But there are a few things you can use. The funniest thing, the easiest thing to use, believe it or not, is a bit of spit. Sounds a bit gross, but here we go. And I put a bit of spit in that corner there and then pick up some of the dust, pop it in there and then mix it up. The next trick is to do some painting. So there's the effect that we want. Other things you can use, a bit of honey and it does need a little bit of water to go with that. Now it looks slightly nicer, much smoother finish to it. There we go. What do you think? So there we go. We've had a go at making some paint. Have a go with different stones, see what effect you can get. But do be careful. Don't forget when you're breaking those stones up, wear some glasses to make sure nothing comes back in your eye. Have a go, do some paintings, send us in a picture. We'd love to see them. Thanks very much. Bye.